Hey Internets, Pixel Geek here. Um, in this new series of videos, I'm going to show you how I redesign Comic Con's website. It's just a fun weekend project that I challenge myself to do. Now, I've already got the wireframes done and sketched out, and I also did some UI element sketches. And you don't really grasp what's in your mind and see if it's actually doable and if it looks good until you actually put it into a design tool where well a lot of people used to do Photoshop and because of responsive web design uh, Photoshop isn't really responsive you only have one set canvas so you can't really see it how it looks in tablet or mobile so the program that you're seeing right now is called Webflow it's a cloud-based design tool and it kind of looks like Photoshop, as you can tell. But uh, everything you're doing inside the tool is being saved in the cloud as HTML and CSS. So whenever you're done, you can just export the code or even just publish it onto Webflow's servers. And this is actually a real what you see is what you get kind of tool. And the code that it produces is actually quite clean and minified and plus Webflow has CDN um, capabilities so all your images and whatnot are gonna load fast. So what you see me doing right now is I'm creating my own custom navbar. Um, I'm adding the right now I'm adding the font awesome web font so I can go ahead and let me find a, there we go, get the hamburger menu icon, size it up, and there we go, I have my own custom menu button. Next, what am I doing? Uh, okay, so I'm putting a search bar, and the reason why I'm hiding the whole nav bar into a menu button is because with websites that are so big and data heavy most people don't go to websites browsing for information they're actually going to a website to with the inkling of what they're trying to find and so that's why if you're going to Comic Con's website you're usually wondering oh um how do I get badges or what are the rules for Hall H and to make it faster people would rather search for it than browse through many different menus and submenus. And this is why I'm putting more emphasis on the search box rather than the nav bar. Okay, next I'm making a a login register button. There you go. I'm gonna align it to the right. And so there you go. And now I'm I left the space for the hero area but right now I'm working on what's below the hero okay trying to figure out the main content wrapper mm -hmm. double checking if everything is nice and responsive and yeah um everything out of webflow out of the box is responsive so you don't have to worry about that and in my later videos, you'll see me um, refine this website more and more. So at the end, it'll be totally responsive. Okay, now I'm working on some imagery. So I'm going to put that Stormtrooper in there. This is for the hero row. So Comic-Con has a carousel on their homepage. And carousels are the old way of doing things. Not many people wait for carousels to slide over, nor would they want to click on a dot or the, the next button to see the next slide. So I'm changing this by making it a slider, but more of a tabbed feature. So you can tab around from one slide to another. But in each tab, you're going to get a thumbnail and some copy, so you know what's coming up next. But the slider doesn't actually autoplay. You have to play it yourself. 
And plus, a lot of marketing teams in uh, big corporate groups like this love to play with carousels, thinking that we can put seven to ten slides and people will wait for each slide to show up. And that's actually not the case. If you want some studies on it, go to shouldiuseacarousel.com. And then that'll just spell it out for you. Okay, now I'm using some placeholder text, some lorem ipsum, designing my tabs a little bit more. So I'm copying the colors from Comic-Con's website. And as you can see, everything for CSS is done in the right side panel. You get your color options, you get your borders, border radius, typography, you get everything. Everything you need in CSS. Now, there's going to be a lot of CSS3 things you still can't do in Webflow. For example, uh, perspective, um, and some other little things, but there's a lot of CSS3 um, that is available for you, like rotate, translate, CSS3 animations are in there. So you, you get a lot out of it, and the team is working really hard to continu continually push this design tool to the limit to make sure that it's in line with everything that the web can do. Okay, cool. So at this part, I'm making columns, and these columns are automatically responsive, and I'll be showing you how I do that in later videos. But for now, I'm just doing the regular left main content, right rail. Right here, I'm playing around with the H1 tag trying to do a different style and so I downloaded a superhero silhouette to kind of give it more of a comic book feel whereas Comic-Con's current website it feels very text heavy very business looking and so I wanted to give it a little bit more style okay there's a superhero and now I'm gonna position it absolute and move it around a bit and there we go. Change that color around. Maybe light blue. Okay, at this part, I'm not really liking what I see with the hero row. So, just changing around a bit, see how I can make the tabs less less visually noisy and so maybe trying out the something in Photoshop where I cut out the stormtrooper by himself and give focus to him it's still visually noisy but um, later in this video you'll see I kinda clean it up All right, now I'm just, now I see the orange because I want to use a different color for the call to action button. And then I figured, you know what, maybe I'll get away from the yellow and, and see how this makes me feel. And so I'm playing around with um, the orange because it's a complementary color to blue. It's the easiest, easiest color combination. And right now I'm playing with the button text, making sure... I'm playing around with the call to action button to make sure that when you hover on it, it does something different. And then also when it's pressed down, it does something different. So there you go. So yeah, in this design tool, you can do your hovers. You can do your active states. Play around with opacities. Okay, here, 
I try to do something different with the hero image. It's now coming out it's coming out more in line with what I want because the tabs aren't as noisy. And right here I'm playing around with the share. Not not quite fond of it, so I remove it and try to do something else. So I start doing the the countdown clock trying to add hype to what is already a super hyped convention. And then I figure, okay, here we go. I fast forward and I already have the countdown clock, convention hours. I already did some light boxes. Now, if you want to see what this website looks like as I keep progressing on it, I'll put the link right here and then I'll also put it in the description box so now I'm just adding the sponsors right here I think okay four column just feels too spaced out so I keep adding and then I'm like mm. No, let's make it six columns. See how that makes me feel. I feel a little bit better. Sure, the spacing of the uh, logos could be different, but I'll probably I'll probably fix that up in a in a part two. So there you go. Now I'm just refining little things here and there. Thanks for watching this video. Please subscribe. And again, the link to this project will be in the description box below. If you have any questions, please tweet me. If you want to try out Webflow, it's at webflow.com. And yeah, I'll see you guys in part two.